my friends. This is video two of the three video series on our wrap up of our homeschool first quarter, our term curriculum picks for term four, and how to build your own homeschool bundle on our website. So video two is all about our curriculum picks for term four. Very exciting. I'm going to quickly go over number one, how short are our terms? Why are our terms that short? And then just get down to the nitty gritty of what are we choosing for our almost seven year old. He turned seven in four days. So I'm just going to our seven year old and eight and a half year old because she turns nine in two months. What we're choosing for them, kind of what grades they are and how we don't really care about the grades. So keep watching if you want to find out. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Oh, and don't forget that we have three other curriculum term picks videos for this year if you want to go through those. Okay, let's do it. All right, like in the other video, I'm just going to scooch on over here because I actually made a free curriculum term pick schedule if you wanted to do the exact same thing as us. You don't have to. And my business is more about, you know, picking and choosing what works for your family because everyone's family is different and every kid in every family is also different. So I am not one that says use the same thing for everybody, which is one of the reasons why our curriculum is a lot lower priced is because, you know, you're gonna change your mind. Maybe you'll use it here and there. Maybe you'll use it with one child or the other child. Maybe you'll just use it the one time and you want it to be better priced. So I got your back on that one. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. So first of all, here's curriculum term picks for term one. Okay, and then for term two, and then for term three, and if you want to watch any of those curriculum term pick videos, they will be in the description of this video, the video before this video, and the video after this video. So there will be plenty of those. I actually have a curriculum term playlist as well. But here is the picks for curriculum term four. So I'm just going to briefly talk about these. And I'm also going to pull up some look throughs on the screen for you here, as well as having the links in the description. But first, I'm going to stop and say, please subscribe. Please like and comment on this video. Ask me a question. Tell me about yourself. Tell me if you want a giveaway, like I mentioned at the end of the last video. I'll mention it at the end of this video, too, if you stick around just come over and say hi. This is how I am trying to help support my family, show my kids that it's okay to follow their dreams, and let's go ahead and move on. All right, so here are the curriculum picks for term four. Now, terms for us have changed this year because of the way that we are putting out these unschooling calendars where my kids and I make them, then you use them. We are doing shorter terms. So each term is three weeks. It's generally the first three weeks of the month, but it really depends it just kind of depends on how the month turns out. So this this last week that we just finished was actually our off term week. Um, and so, you know, it was the first week of the month. But anyways, so our terms are about three weeks long. And the reason, reason, the reason they're about three weeks long is so that we have enough time to use the unit, make the unit, get it ready for you. And then during that off week, the kids kind of get a break so I can have a break so I can prepare what we're using for the next term. In the past, we've done things like three months on and one month off. We've done six weeks on and one week off. I really like the three weeks on and one week off because even though it's one week off, it's really not. It's just maybe a little bit less structure. And then it keeps it short and sweet. So the kids are like, mom, when are we doing school again? Like they were just asking yesterday. Um, I had a really bad migraine the last two days, and so we didn't do our reading, even though we usually do read on our off weeks still. They were like, Mom, when are we going to do that again? And I was like, oh, don't worry, we'll do it on Monday. So it keeps it short and sweet, so they are still begging for more. Also, the three weeks on and one week off fits really well with our history units because they're they're kind of formatted around three weeks to a unit for the American history unit. Um and for the renaissance we ended up doing that too we did a three weeks on one week off sort of a deal for that because there are six weeks in the renaissance unit and so it, it it just works really well for us you do not have to do three weeks on one week off but i'm just telling you that's how we do it and that's why so now i'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about here what we've got with this um term four curriculum term picks so my kids are turning seven and turning nine up here really soon. So I'm just gonna refer to them as seven and nine because that's easier than saying almost seven and almost nine or six and eight, which really doesn't even categorize where they are anymore. 
So my school-aged kids, I should mention, are seven and nine, and respectively are in grades one and three, but hover between multiple grades for different subjects. They're in different grades for language arts than they are for math. Science and history, we don't usually do grades. It's just rather whether it's elementary, junior high, or high school. And because of their age, it's elementary. So my seven-year-old is in second grade math. He's still hovering in like kindergarten to first grade English language arts because he has dyslexia and he struggles a little bit with writing and stuff like that. My nine-year-old is technically in third grade, but she's in like fourth-ish grade <laughs> math. She's, she's getting higher up there. In reading, she's in like sixth to seventh grade. And in writing, she's just right at her age in about third grade. So it depends. So we don't really use grade levels. They're both just, they're just in elementary. And we just, uh, you know, move to one, the next level as we go. So what we're doing is for this we have unschooling math and we're focusing on fractions and what did I say? Graphing this month. Um, so really easy, just mostly fractions and graphing, which all has to do a lot with cooking, which fits really well into the budgeting and stuff that they're learning too, that you'll also find in the graphing unit. Um, for our book, like I said, we're reading the secret garden. If we finish the secret garden before the end of the term, I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but we'll see. It'll just depend on what they want to do probably. Um, and the writing that they're doing is lowercase writing. However, this week we're going to be doing kind of like a, a test where I'm just going to ask them to show me what each letter looks like and the ones that they have either trouble on, trouble recalling um, quickly. Those are the ones that we're going to focus on this month. Then science now, you guys, I just released the bugs unit for you guys for science. We're starting on our garden unit so that that will be ready for you on May 1st, which May in our house has been garden schooling month for like four years. So that's why I chose the garden schooling for May 1st. And even though we're technically using it ahead of time, May is just garden schooling month to me. <laughs> and it probably always will be. So that's also why we're reading The Secret Garden. It's because Secret Garden and garden schooling just go hand in hand. Um, and then so you've got math, the science slash history slash steam slash art, you know, it slash recipes is uh, for us garden for you guys bugs. Math is unschooling math in the kitchen. Language arts is the reading and the writing and history. We're not really doing history this month. But other electives that we're throwing in there are mostly cooking related but we're also doing just more life skills like we're going to be working outside in the garden. We're going to, I'm going to be having the kids, you know, write the different labels for being outside in the garden, all sorts of stuff like that. So here, this is the breakdown. That's what we're using. That's what we're doing. And you can see all of the links in the description. If you want me to start doing weekly YouTube video giveaways, leave a comment. Let me know if you're interested and then I'll start that next week or maybe what I'll do is if I get enough comments on these videos I will just announce the winner next week let me know see you guys oh yeah there's another video so watch that one too